which I'll sign it, it says, let your speech always be gracious, gentle, encouraging, and it says seasoned, like kind of like your food, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So meaning that if each person was to ask you about your faith, some person asks you about something that calls something a negative response, you should change that and speak positive and be encouraging, uplifting, you know, whatever it might be that you might have a discussion. We'll discuss it some more and talk about what you should, you know, be careful how you speak to other people, not slandering, gossiping. That'll be next week. It'll be really good discussion. We'll discuss that next week. Slandering, gossiping, negative talk. You must stay positive. Is everybody clear on that? That'll be next week. But now, so how do you respond to a person positively? If you're talking about that person. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about outside, talking to other people next week. So do you remember what seasoned with salt, what does that mean? You shake salt on what I said. But what does it mean with salt? It means that if you sprinkle something to make it taste better, to make it more attractive, kind of like your food. So being the truth, it's like a preservative. That's something the good that preserves things, not causing it to decay, but it saves things. It also makes it taste good. So if a person is a Christian, they must talk positively. If there's something people and they hear something that's pleasing, it's attractive, and they like to hear that, that's important and it's very good. So it kind of balances everything out. You don't have negative, but everything is good and encouraging. So that's what that means. As Christians, you should speak like that. So now, there's another scripture that we discussed. It was before this about staying positive and good and encouraging. But the next scripture we're going to discuss says, Do not talk negative. Do not talk offensive. Use bad words cursing, filthy talk to other people. You don't want other people seeing that, talking negative. So do not use foul. Maybe like Jonathan knows, he says foul, he's football. Or foul, but no, that's not that foul. <laughs> not the same as they use in football, but this means bad. This word foul means bad. Like a dirty language, yeah, filthy. Or abusive language. Let everything you say be good <coughs> and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. They say, oh, okay, so that's what we're going to discuss. Don't use foul or abusive language. So meaning what? Cussing. <coughs> what about shut up? Can we tell somebody to shut up? Like Jonathan says, no, that's not bad. But you have to understand it is included in this. When you tell somebody to shut up, that is included in abusive language. So we'll go a little bit deeper. The thing, shut up. The thing, shut up. It's rude. 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 Yikes. Yikes. Yes. Somebody tell me. I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe you're right. I don't know how to know that sense. <laughs> so there's many different verses um, here. They're used different words. So I know there's a lot of discussion going on. Okay, are we all good? Okay. 
So there's a few other verses, but they just use different words. They talk about different words. So Ephesians 4.29, it's just a different version. This is from the ESV, so I just looked at different versions of the same scripture. This one says, let no corrupting talk, something like something that spreads, come out of your mouth. This one's from the CEV. It says, stop all of your dirty talk. This one from the ISV says, let no filthy talk be heard from your mouths. So, of course, you're not talking, you know, I'm not standing up here talking. You sign, right? We all sign. We do not allow any filthy talk to be heard from your hands, your speech. So we have other words also, you know, that keep going many different Bible translations, use different words. There's hateful. The word hateful shows hate. Any words that show hate? Rotten, you know, something that's like fruit. And it wilt. Like a rotten feed. Lousy, rotten, sign rotten that way. Okay. Polluting, like when you throw trash out, becomes filthy, it spreads. Harmful, things that are painful, harmful, oh, you feel hurt and ugly. We're <laughs> ugly. So ugly. There's many different words that it uses, but you get the idea. You can understand. The Greek word for these is what? Sapros. Yes. Sapros means each one of these. It can mean any of these. Jesus, when Jesus spoke, Luke 6, 43, Matthew, there's two verses in Matthew talking about this. This is a good, well, first of all, in Matthew, this is Luke. I've only found one Greek word, sapros, that's in English, you know, this in the English word. Which word is that? Bad. Now the Greek word sapros means bad. <clears throat> it's the same. It's the same as the Greek word sapros, which is very interesting. It says a good tree can't produce bad fruit. And that's right. If you have a tree, it's really good. Can it produce bad fruit? No. If you have a good tree, it will produce good fruit, right? So if you have a bad tree, will that produce good fruit? No, it can't. It will have bad fruit, right? Right. So that's the point. And that's from the Greek word sapros. Now, maybe you're all thinking about a movie. Some of them, there's many out there that have bad words, bad speech. Many, many out there. Maybe some of you are used to it. You used to watch them, you just go ahead and watch them. You see that closed captions, you see the bad Luke. words, bad words, bad Luke. words, all of them. And you become used to it. Sometimes the closed captions bleep them out. <clears throat> But we become used to it and we just accept them. And it's just common. We don't we don't really reject it. We just accept it and keep going. It's no big deal. But no. So suppose I use a bad word, you know, you would think nothing of it. Would you think nothing of it if I used bad language? No, you look at me. <laughs> you see me cursing. 
maybe you all would drop your chin and say, wow, you said back when we talked about something. And you all might become curious about what I would say, right? So are you ready? Look. You're curious, what does it say? What word is this? Are you ready? <laughs> no, I just this. There was nothing there. It's just something silly. But you all might feel like oh, maybe you're a little embarrassed. Maybe you're kind of curious. Like, oh, that's awful. Pastor, Pastor Brad said something bad. But really, I just created something with my mouth. But that causes you to feel awkward. Right? So why? Why does that make you feel so curious? That's a big deal, right? It's a really big deal. So on TV, in the news, you watch, and you see the interviews, and they use bad words. And they respond. The point is on TV, you know, when you see the news workers, like today, the news today, ABC, NBC, and you'll notice they don't use bad words. Have you noticed them using any bad words? There's none. Why is that? Because they know that people would feel offended. They know that. They want it to be nice and pleasant so that people enjoy watching the news. But it doesn't matter. You know, other people, when they're interviewing using bad words, they just kind of keep quiet. Now, we as Christians, are we all right with that? With those bad words and the filthy language? Is that all right? Well, isn't it the same as the news people there on TV talking using no bad words that are offensive or used to saying shut up? Are we as the same or them or not? So why do other people just continue to accept it? And we Christians use things that are not appropriate. Do we accept that? Is that right or not? What about the other people? So we as Christians are responsible but now the point I want to make clear is that maybe you're not sure if, like, shut up, is that all right, is that okay, other words, yeah. but no, it's not healthy. That's the point. It's just not healthy. So I'll show you. There's another scripture from the NIV, Ephesians chapter 4, 29. And there are other, some, there's some others in the Bible as well, but this one uses unwholesome, meaning not healthy. But the word wholesome is healthy. Un means not and not healthy. So any talk, maybe some of you are used to it, but it means anything that's not healthy. For example, so we all have some health issues. Some of us do. Some of us, you know, just different things that are something that might be simple, but still not healthy, right? It's not healthy. Anything. <laughs> I thought you meant to hear it, sorry. <laughs> like, spot your like, you have skin issues. Is that healthy? No, it's not healthy if you have skin issues like on your face. So anything like that is not healthy. Anything. Maybe it's something simple, but it's the same as speech. If it's not healthy, you don't say it. You just don't say it. And we'll have more discussions and some more examples. But why is it so important that we as Christians do not speak words that are bad and offensive or unhealthy, rude, why? Well, that's because it's because we all are God's people. And we represent God. And we are supposed to represent him and be like him, not we're not specifically just like him. The point is that we we speak words that are not appropriate, that are not healthy. We speak those that shows sin and wrong. Those in sense such that something is wrong. It's a disappointment.
maybe you're dwelling on something that's causing you to have offensive speech. But really, basically, we're all the same inside. We all have sin. It's there. We all have sin. But you'll notice that a person comes to you that's a new person that you meet for the first time. And you don't know them. But you don't know what kind of person they are, right? But when you speak to them, you'll know right away by their speech. It shows what kind of person you are, right? And I remember a long time ago when I was working, I'm good on time. So working, I was very young. I was maybe in high school. I was I grew up a Christian. But I was never involved in bad groups of people. I mean I really hold not a lot. But I thought that all old women never said bad words. Old women. I, that's what I thought. So when I was at work, I was shocked when this old woman used her middle finger and stuck her middle finger. And I was like, what? My chin dropped. And I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so I showed another person. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I was not a bad boy. I was a Christian growing up. And, I, and that's what I thought. That old women never use those bad words. I thought they were nicer, just like my mom, I thought. But no. <laughs> So in the back of my mind, when I saw her, that showed me something ugly about her. So it's the same news like as Christians. If a Christian uses words that are not healthy, it shows the ugliness and people don't like that. Right? So we are responsible and we have to be careful. We know we have to be careful about our speech because it comes from inside. Matthew eleven fifteen. it said it's not what goes into your mouth so some of you are a little concerned the influence about bad language that comes into it with the filth but it's what comes out that's filthy it's like the scripture it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you you are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth so when you speak words it makes you look ugly Should you look ugly as a Christian? No. You shouldn't. So we are responsible for what? In Ephesians 4, 24. So if you have the habit of sinning before you were saved, up until that point, you throw your old sinful nature out, your former way of life, the things that you tend to do, your old habits, you throw out. Like your old way of life before you throw out, which was corrupted inside by lust, and what is power, power, sex, deception, but instead allow the spirit to renew your thoughts and your attitudes, and your character. Change that to new. Don't allow the same as what was before. You have to change to something new. And you put on your new nature that was created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So that's very important that we put off our old self and our old ways of talking. And we put on the new, the new nature, meaning not the trust and salvation, but you have to think, I have to be like Christ. I have to keep that running. The Christ is in me. I have to depend on him continue in the new life, change my attitude, change my speech, and not be the same as before. Is everybody clear? So we're going to go back to Ephesians 4.29. For example, I have four things. So first, misusing God's name in vain. Like mis wrongly using the Lord's name. Of course, we've all heard it many times, again and again and again. Where do you hear that? You see, where do you usually see this? 
When you go out to movies, on TV, they use it over and over and over. So suppose something awful has happened. Oh, Jesus. Let's say they used Jesus' name at my work. When we were all there, they point that and I tell them not to use that. Don't talk about God that way. You told them that. You don't curse God's name. You have to separate yourself from that. At my school, sometimes the kids will say, Oh my God. And I say, don't say that unless Why? you are starting a prayer. Why? <laughs> That's right. Don't say that. The teacher gives, don't say that. give many different examples but a long time ago when I was working in construction I was uh, young I was working over like through high school and college <clears throat> so I worked for my uncle who owned his own construction business and so we were building it's like brick we're doing masonry work And once in a while, I would be misunderstood what the person told me. So I would go over there and I would bring them something. They go, no, not that. That's not what I wanted. So I'm like, oops, I misunderstood. Sometimes that would happen. So what would they say? Oh, Brad. Oh, Brad. But if something was messed up, I'd say, oh, Brad. And I thought, did they say that? Did they say over oh, They're calling my name, but I was not involved in anything. No. But they would still say that. No. People would say, "Oh, Brad." And they would <clears throat> take the further person messed up and they say, "Oh, Brad." But they would be using my name, and that made me feel bad. And I was like, "Okay, I'm just ignore it and moved on." But that's not the same as using God's name. That's awful. We respect God, that's reverence. And Jesus is the Father, Yahweh. You have to be careful how you use God's name. <clears throat> Sometimes we use God's name, and it's not bad because, you know, you have an idea of something, you see a wreck, and you say, Oh, God, I hope they're all right. You know, it's kind of like praying to God. Well, uh, most of the time you don't mean that though. That causes, you know, confusion, you're messed up. You say, oh God, I hope they're all right. Yeah, I know. If you're praying, if you're praying, I know what you're saying. You say, God, oh, please help this person, and that's fine. But if you say, oh, God, no, that's completely different. That's disrespectful. Do you understand? It depends on your language and how you're using it. <clears throat> If you're praying, but not just to use it in general, right? If you're praying, it's okay. So you all know what I mean. So the second thing, <clears throat> dirty talk about sex or the body, meaning your body, your private parts, man, woman, filthy talk. And some people think that that's no big deal. Do you have an example? <clears throat> Well, for example, anything dirty, any, any dirty talk, sexual, funny jokes, sexual jokes, anything, anything using the word, <laughs> a four letter word, you know, starts with the F, various things you don't use, you know, maybe some of you think it's no big deal, when people say, people say that all the time, it's really often, it's common, but no. Do you know why? Anybody know why? Because God created everything good. God created these things for man and the woman. 
to be with in marriage, to be included in marriage, to sleep together, and that is a good thing. God created man and woman's bodies to be all good. He said all things were created good. Now, suppose you use the word, the S word, then you say something that God created the body to work wonderfully, to go to the bathroom, you created everything perfectly. But if you use that in a filthy manner to make fun of someone, then that's offensive to God's creation. You speak against someone, it's offensive to God. He created all things good. So to speak filthy and bad about things that God created, do you understand? Is that clear? So you have to be careful. Those filthy words are not appropriate, speaking about sexual things or body. It's offensive to God because he's created them. So you all know I don't have to explain deeply about that. You all know. You know this already. So the next the third thing <clears throat> making holiness or terrible realities less important meaning like something happened really strange happened and you say oh that's no big deal or oh they use the word damn <laughs> Like Gone with the Wind movie. It was an old movie, 19, the old movies from the early 1900s. There was a word, and they said, Damn. I was watching that movie a long time ago. It was the first time that I'd ever watched that movie. It was really the first time. And I was shocked they used that word was because it was not appropriate and that meant that people who were sinning trusted God for their salvation would go to hell they would be they would be damned and that's fine if you're talking about that but if you tell somebody damn you that makes it sound like hell is no big deal like it's just simple oh hell is not real it's not real terrible it's not really terrible because it is a serious thing. It's very serious. It is bad. It's awful. It's a terrible place. People are suffering. But if you use that word like, you know, you know, so holy, making things holy. For example, what in the hell? Or damn? Or holy cow? Holy cow. So sometimes people use that as a funny point, but really that word, holy, the word holy represents God's character. He is holy. But to use that for other things, like various things, you just shouldn't do it. You should not say that at all. Okay, is that clear? And the fourth thing, to say mean or hurtful things. So anything that is not healthy, that is hurtful, that would hurt somebody's feelings, call somebody goofy, stupid, just tell them to shut up. There's many different things that maybe you all think are really little or small, but you have to remember, if you notice very clearly the goal, and I'll show you more specifically later some of the verses. But just don't say those things. If a person is sinning and they're doing something wrong, you have to approach them and nudge them and tell them not to. It would be encouraging, you know, and tell them not to do that and just guide them in the right way. You let them know, you know, be truthful in a loving way. But not to look down on them, to curse them or speak filthy, tell them they're stupid, you know, or you're doing bad things. 
people look down on you, you know, that's bad. You have to be encouraging, you cherish those people, and be loving. And like you're talking to your children, you have to explain things and be encouraging and say positive to them. Say, no, 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 we can't do that. But not be offensive. Any discussion on these? So, have fun playing, Alan. You're goofy. It's fine. Like, if you're having fun, just to be in silly, you know. But if you're in a serious conversation, no. Oh, Brad. Okay. So, going forward, we're all going to say, oh, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you remember again, the point is bad, inappropriate words is something that's not healthy, it's offensive and hurtful. Okay, so a good, perfect example, bad apple. <clears throat> Talk about, let me think about a bad apple. You know what a bad apple looks like? And you think, uh, it might have a worm, it might be decayed. <clears throat> so you see all these apples and there's the one bad apple. Do you want to eat that one? Do you want to eat that? You could cut off the bad and eat good. No, but in post, suppose inside of it, it's really bad. You bit into that. Would you want to? No. You don't want that. It's the same concept. So, you know, somebody's speaking that's unhealthy. What about this one little spot? Just one speck on this one apple. You can cut it off, yes. But the point is that we as Christians we say something that's not appropriate that's not wholesome and hurtful you have to cut it off we should not accept that as Christians in our Christian life so for example like fruit you have this piece of fruit would you accept that if someone gave it to you why so why? Well, for one, it does not help you to be healthy. If you bite into that, it's not healthy, right? Like when you eat your vegetables, your fruits, that's good for your body. But if a bad apple is not healthy, so you don't feed somebody a bad apple. And number two, it might make you sick. It might. If you eat that apple, you could become sick. And it's the same idea, the speaking, inappropriate words and unwholesome things. It could make that person sick. If they could feel disgusted, cause a headache. It's kind of the same thing. You do that, you feel kind of nasty, not happy about other people using those bad words. It can go deep into a person. If you're not using the appropriate words, it can cut them deep. You have to be careful. You can kill them. And it smells bad. You smell that apple, Oof. it smells bad. What does that mean? You speak inappropriate words and offensive language and bad words. It causes that filth kind of makes you smell bad. It's kind of spreads, permeates, spreads, and affects different people. It's kind of the same idea. Oh, and number four, it comes from a bad tree. That means it's coming from inside you, and your heart is bad. Any discussion about those? Don't use foul or abusive language. Why is that important? Because you want to use the appropriate words. You want to speak <laughs> healthy words. You want to, you don't want to speak rude and offensively and dirty and unhealthy. And why is that? Because it says, let everything you say be good and helpful. It should be encouraging. It should help build someone up. <clears throat> not make them feel awkward. It should help their faith and encourage them and help them. If we don't want to be negative, we have to stay positive. So it says, do not use bad, foul, or abusive language. But let everything you say be positive, encouraging.
encouraging, helpful. Okay. <clears throat> Doesn't matter if the situation is negative or bad. You have to think in your thoughts. Stay positive and encouraging. I can't think of a good example right now, but maybe something will pop up. Okay, for example, if maybe you're talking with someone and those people don't like another person and they just feel frustrated and a little angry, you have to remember to say good things about that person. There are good things about that person and you are encouraging about that. <clears throat> and you think you hear them saying too much negative about that person. So like I know that we all go to a house like a friend's house, another person's house, you go there, and then when you leave, we tend to talk negative because they were not nice, the house was dirty, there's things just thrown in the floor. I don't know, some of you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lori said, my house, my house, but no. But really, <clears throat> you should not say that. You should be more positive. Say, oh, I like the decorations. The decorations are beautiful. You know, I like the way they put up everything. That's just like kind of an example, you think, of, you know, something good in the house, and you say something nice. Your thoughts should be nice, like about their decorations, or I like that. That's really cool. You know, something. And basement might be nice might have had some improvements it's really beautiful you know to not say the negative things we should be encouraging to that person that's a good example so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them so we should be encouraging to the people who hear them so Christians should be positive and encouraging so people that listen will be attracted and they feel encouraged and inspired. But if at some point, you know, you let someone know something important, they will feel uncomfortable and they would listen to you. They will. But if you speak negatively all the time and then you go to let them know something, they're not going to feel comfortable. You want to feel comfortable. You always feel comfortable with someone who is always positive. And when they let you know something, you know, bothering them, you try to help, you feel more comfortable with that person because they're always positive and they tend to be encouraging. And that's who you want to express yourself to. It's the same as us. We should be like them. We should be positive and encouraging and uplifting. Okay? So now, just like I recently explained, you are to have no use of filthy words, no offensive language, you know, even if there's just a few bad words, do not allow it. It's a healthy period. Don't accept it. So does that mean that we should bend ourselves? Am I avoiding unwholesome words? So am I avoiding words that are not healthy, bad, dirty, whatever? Am I I'm to avoid those? Is that what that means? Not really. That's not the point. Stop cursing using the wrong words. Go just be quiet. Instead, you encourage the person to use good words. Excuse me. You don't just avoid them altogether. You just encourage them. So then you ask yourself, am I helping others to grow in their faith by what I say? So if I say something, am I encouraging them to grow in the Lord? That's what they're asking. Not just to stop speaking to that person and not say anything. No. The point is that instead you would speak positively, encourage those people who need to hear you, let them know the truth. Okay? This is good. So a lot of people are watching you. The world is watching you. So if you're there and something happens in a situation, like for example, you know, Lori's school, she's like what she recently said, if people are watching her speak words, they're watching Lori to see what she says. If someone says a dirty word, they're going to watch Lori. And there's some situation where someone says something bad, 
they're going to watch you. So you need to be encouraging. <laughs> so I live, remember when we lived on the farm, they helped get the new wagon and put the wheel on the wagon. They did something wrong. They were pinched his finger. He wanted to say my word, but he didn't. They looked at me. I have to stop and catch myself. So people are watching you. So if people are watching you, you want to do something good. You want to speak positive, encouraging, appropriate words. Sometimes I say bad words. So, but like what you said, yes, I'll let you know that sometimes you start to say something and then you have to remind yourself that you're letting the world influence you. You have to stop. You have to be careful. Okay. Time is closing up. So if you'll notice, Paul was writing in Romans to the Christians. And there was some negative talk but he was being truthful and trying to encourage them. That was in chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. But at first, when he was opening up, chapter 1, verse 8, he said, Let me say first that I thank you, my God, through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith in him is being talked about. Meaning it was spreading all over the world. And they heard about their faith. He was thanking God for them. For being positive and encouraging. It doesn't matter there was problems there in the church. He was letting everybody know that they were being positive and encouragement. And in 1 Corinthians 4, the people in Corinth they had lots of problems. The church has had many, many, many problems. But they stayed positive. They said, I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts that he has given you. Now that you belong to Christ Jesus, through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. So that was very positive and encouraging. Same as we need to stay positive and encouraging to others. If a person, you know, is just doing something that's not, you know, that's a little bad, you encourage them, or that's, Stay involved. <coughs> Tell them that God that's impressive. God loves you. Encourage them, you know, and they'll feel encouraged. We are to even if they make mistakes, we still have to encourage that person. Eloquent means proper eloquent words. Not bad things, but good, polite language, mm -hmm. like as in Christian. So remember, next Sunday we'll discuss about what we should say and how we should say it about other people. And what we should say between people, about others, between others, and how we are careful of how we say things. That can become gossip or slanderous. Okay? We'll close in prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for these scriptures. Wow. They really to help us to know and to remind us to look and read the scriptures that teach us that we should do the same as Jesus. As Christians, we represent you and you are holy. Please forgive us. Know that we are guilty. We say things that are not appropriate. Father, pray that you would to help us learn to discipline ourselves, learn to practice each week, and to learn to stay positive and encouraging, even to our husbands, our wives, friends, neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen.